Um, Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel taken to Babylon. In the third year of the reign of Joachim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house, house of his God. And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well flavor, favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning, in knowledge, and understanding, science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hannah, Mishael, and Az Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belzazar, and to Hannah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azra of Bendigo. Daniel's Faithfulness But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself, now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who had appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse, liking that the children which are of your, of your sort? Then shall ye make me in danger, my head of to the king. Then said Daniel to Melziar, whom the prince of your eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hannah, Mishael, and Azara, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat, and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days their countenances appeared far fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children, which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzer took away the portion of their meat, and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had mis had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hannah, Mishael, and Azar. Therefore, 
stood day before the king in all in and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm and Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep broke from him. Then the king commanded to call the magician, and the astrologer, and the sorcerer, and the Chaldean, for to sue the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king of Shirak, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Thereof show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, he, we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king. Lord, no ruler that, su that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king require it, and there is none other than can show it before the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel, his fellows, to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said unto Eric the king captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Eric made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. God reveals Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Then Daniel went into his house and made the thing known to Hannah, Mishael, and Azra, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision, 
Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom that might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed the king, set up kings. He gave it wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to dumb that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knew, knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thought God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what he desired of thee, though has now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Antioch Ara, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Anrock brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judea, Judah, and that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Balzar, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothslayers shew unto the king. But there is a God in, in heaven that revealed secrets and make it known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days, the dream and the visions of thy head on thy bed are these. As, as for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into my mind. Upon thy bed, what should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealed its secrets, make it known to thee, what shall come to pass? But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom, that I have more than any living but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king. And though, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Daniel's inter interprets the dream. Though, O king, saw us, and behold a great image, this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's, this image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Though o, though, o king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven had given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wherever, where, wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven had he given into thy hand, and had made thee, thee ruler over them all. Thou art his head of gold. And after thee shall arise another king inferior to thee, another third kingdom of brass, 
which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong, strong as iron. For as much as iron break it in pieces and subdue all things, and as iron that break it all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And where, whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of the potter's clay, part of iron, and the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with merry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of, of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas those saw is iron mixed with Mary's clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, and the great God that had made known to the king that shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Daniel is promoted. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of kings, and revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal the secret. The king answered, Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Daniel chapter 3 Nebuchadnezzar's Golden Image Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captain, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the di dictate. Uh, dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges and the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an old herald cried out loud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackpot, psaltery, cymer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whoso fall it not down and worship till the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, shalbot, psaltery, and all kinds of music, 
all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, the fiery furnace. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Though, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, salbut, psaltery, and do cymer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should not should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou has set out the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Ab Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Ab Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, It is true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, shakput, saltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour to the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God that shall deliver you out of thy, my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. So if be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were brought in their coats, their hoisin, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the fiery exceeding hot, the flame of fire slew those men that looked up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then these, then, and these, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was in a stone, stony, and rose up in haste and spoke and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And the Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the, of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, 
And the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon those whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's words and yield their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except for their own god. Therefore I make a decree, not that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shedrach, Meshach, Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Daniel chapter 4 Nebuchadnezzar praises God Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the suit slayers. And I told the dream before them, but they might not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at least Daniel, but at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belchanazar, according to the name of my God, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods and before him i told the dream saying o balzir master of the magician because i know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee and no secret trouble thee tell me the visions of my dream that i have seen and the interpretation thereof thus were the visions of my head in my bed i saw and behold a tree in the midst of the, the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it and the fowls of the heaven dwell in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and, and holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, who, who down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that he living, that the living may know 
that the most high rule it in the kingdom of men and give it to whomever, whomsoever he will and set up over it the beast, the bases of men. This dream I, Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now, though, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Daniel's Interpretations, the second dream. Then N Daniel, whose name was Belzar, was aston stoned for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spoke and said, Belzar, Tar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof to thy enemies. The tree that those sawest which grow, grew and was strong, whoso height reacheth unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown, and become strong, for the, thy greatness is grown, and reach it into heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven, and saying, Who the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Let this portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my lord, the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee o to eat grass and ox as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High rule it in the kingdom of men, and give it, it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Nebuchadnezzar's Humiliation All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar, at the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass and ox as oxen seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High rule it in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was 
the king fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. Nebuchadnezzar restored him. At, at the end of days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he do it according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What do, what does do? At the same time, my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my hour and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven. All who works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Daniel chapter 5 The handwriting on the wall Belzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came four fingers of a man's hand, and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and of the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosened, and his knees smote one against another. The king cried out aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the suit slayers, and the king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astoned. Now the queen, by reason of the word of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, who's who, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father liked and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, who is the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and suit slayers. 
or as much as an excellent spirit and a knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belzar now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Daniel interprets the handwriting. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art the, of the children of the captivity of Ch Ju Judah, whom the king of my father brought out of Jury? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light, understanding, and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the ter interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee, that thou can make interpretation and dissolve doubts. Now if thou can read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. The Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another, yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, Latin languages, <laughs> languages trembled and feared before him whom he was he slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would be he set up and whom he would be he he put down but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was depo deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And though his son, O Belzar, has not humbled thy heart, though thou is newest all this, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and though and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in him, and though has praised the gods of silver, and gold of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and who are all thy ways, has thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written, and this is the writing that was written, mean, mean, tekel, Afrasin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mean God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belzar, they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Balzar the king of Chaldeans slain, and 
Darius the Median took the kingdom, being though threescore and two years old. Daniel chapter 6 Daniel and the Lion's Den It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this king Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because of an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not, they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, and the princes, the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whatsoever shall take ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days save of thee. O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it not be changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which altered not. Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and they spoke before the king concerning the king's decree, has though not signed a decree that every man shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days save thee of thee. O king shall be cast on to the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altered not. Then answered they and said before the king, the Daniel, which is of the children of captivity of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou had signed, but make it his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. displeased for himself. Continue. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplic supplication before his God. Then they came near and spoke before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any of any god or man within thirty days save of thee o king shall be cast into the dens of lions the king answered and said the thing is true according to the law of the Med Medes and persians which altered not then answered they that said before the king 
that Daniel, which is the children of the captivity of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make it his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, No, O king, that the law of the Maedes and Persians is, that no decree nor statue which the king established may be changed. Then, and then answered they that, and said before the king, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judea, Judah, regard not the O king, nor the decree that thou has signed, but make it his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statue which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continueth, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lord, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, and passed the night fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning, and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice, unto Daniel, and the king spoke and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continue able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God had sent his angel and had shut the lion's mouth, that they have no not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done so hurt, no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded that they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the ma mastery of them, and broke all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages, that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men trembled and fear before the God of Daniel, for he, he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivered and rescued, and he worked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. 
So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian.
If I wrote you a song, if I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter. is my plea 
Danger is past. I'm feeling so happy. 
I'm anchored at last I'm anchored in love divine He saw me in danger and lovingly came To pilot my stormy young soul Sweet peace he is offered and blessed his dear name The billows no longer roll The danger, the tempest forever is o'er I anchor is holding, I'm safe evermore What gladness, what rapture is mine The water's receding, the danger is past I'm feeling so happy, I'm anchored at last I'm anchored in love divine His love shall control me through life and through death How sweetly I'll trust till the end I'll praise Him each hour and my last dying breath Shall sing of my soul's best friend The danger, the tempest forever is o'er My anchor is holding, I'm safe evermore What gladness, what rapture is mine The water's receding, the danger is past I'm feeling so happy, I'm anchored at last I'm anchored in love divine I'm anchored in love in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know thus saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him more and o'er Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus Just from sin and self to cease Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him trust him more I'm so glad I learned to trust thee precious Jesus Savior friend and I know that thou art with me wilt be with me till the end Jesus Jesus 
trust Him How I've proved Him more and more Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more Oh, for grace to trust Him more
treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other. My soul is satisfied in Him. Summer flowers, we fade and die. Fame, youth, and beauty hurry by. But life eternal calls to us at the cross. I will not boast in wealth or might. Or human wisdom's fleeting light But I will boast in knowing Christ At the cross I rejoice in my Redeemer Greatest treasure Wellspring of my soul I will trust in Him no other is satisfied in Him alone. Do wonders here that I confess my worth and my unworthiness, my value fixed, my ransom paid. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other, my soul is satisfied in Him. Hey, who? 
God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He lived and died To buy my pardon An empty grave is there To prove my Savior lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives All fear is gone Because I know Who holds the future And life is worth the living Just because he lives How sweet to hold A newborn baby And feel the pride And joy he brings Yet sweeter still That calm assurance That child can face certain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know who holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives And then one day I'll cross that river I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as death gives way to victory I'll see the
and reflect your rays Stars and angels sing around you Center of unbroken praise Field and forest, vale and mountain Flowery meadow, flashing sea Chanting bird and flowing fountain Call us to rejoice in Darkness turned to light I'm overjoyed You give eternal life I'm overjoyed Now I fight the good fight I'm overjoyed The joy of the Lord is my strength Christ be with me, Christ. 
Christ within me, Christ behind me and before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet and in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friends. plate of righteousness it will guard your heart from wickedness wrap your feet in the gospel of peace for without it you will have no release and take the shield of faith hold strong in those fires that you will face Put on your head the helmet of salvation to protect your mind from wild temptation and remember the sword of the Spirit. His word will give you life when you hear it. And pray, 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 pray. His 
mouth goes forth and does your soul its good. The mountains and the hills will sing, the trees will clap their hands. You'll go out with joy, be led with peace into the promised land. of the ocean are powerful And if you're not anchored they will pull Out to places you never thought you'd go before Beyond that golden shore The tides are in motion, the unforgiving They'll take all your castles back to the sea Your time, your place, your faith, your memory of that golden shore. And the foolish man built his house upon the sand. Washed it all away Oh Lord, I want to be wise But not in my own eyes Lest your words I despise A 
ocean to mesmerize A subtle devotion to compromise Before you know you're lost at sea house upon the sand And the waves they came and they washed it all away Oh Lord I want to be wise But not in my own eyes Lest your
The Book of Daniel. The story is set right after Babylon's first attack on Jerusalem, and they had plundered the city and its temple and taken a wave of Israelites into exile. Among them were four men from the royal family of David. Daniel, who's later named Belteshazzar, and his three friends, who you probably know by their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This book tells of their struggles to maintain hope in the land of their conquerors. The book's design seems pretty simple at first. Chapters 1 through 6 contain stories about Daniel and his friends in Babylon, while chapters 7 through 12 contain the visions of Daniel about the future. But this two-part shape is made even more interesting by another design feature, and that's the book's language. It begins in Hebrew, the language of the Israelites, but chapters 2 through 7 are written in Aramaic, a cousin language to Hebrew spoken widely among the ancient empires. But then in chapters 8 through 12, it goes back to Hebrew. This design shows how chapters 2 through 7 are a coherent section, but it also highlights the importance of chapters 2 and 7 for understanding the later chapters of the book. Let's just dive in. Chapter 1 introduces the basic tension of the first half of the book. Daniel and his friends, they're really wise and capable, and they're recruited to serve in the royal palace of Babylon. But they're pressured to give up their Jewish identity by living and eating like Babylonians and violating the Jewish food laws found in the Torah. So they refuse, and they choose faithfulness to the Torah, and it puts them in danger. But God delivers them, and they end up being elevated by the king of Babylon. After this begins the Aramaic section, which you'll see has this really cool symmetrical design. So first the king of Babylon has a dream that, it turns out, only Daniel is able to interpret. It's about a huge statue made of four types of metal, and it symbolizes a sequence of kingdoms, and the head is Babylon. But then a huge rock comes flying in, and it shatters the statue, and it becomes this huge mountain. Now this dream is the first of many symbolic visions in the book, and this one introduces the basic storyline of them all. Daniel says that the statue represents a train of human kingdoms following from Babylon, and they will all fill God's world with violence. But one day, God's kingdom will come and will confront and humble the arrogant kingdoms of this world and fill the world with the healing justice of God's reign and rule. After this, chapter 3 tells the famous story of Daniel's three friends who refuse to bow down and worship a huge idol statue, which, like the statue in chapter 2, represents the king and his imperial power. And so the friends are persecuted, they're thrown into a fiery furnace, but God delivers them from death and they're exalted by the king who now acknowledges their God as the true one. After this come a pair of stories about two Babylonian kings, the father, Nebuchadnezzar, and then his son, Belshazzar. They're both filled with pride because of their imperial power. And so, like in chapter 2, God warns them both through dreams and then visions, which, also like chapter 2, only Daniel can interpret. He says that both kings are to humble themselves before God, and both kings arrogantly resist. So Nebuchadnezzar is stricken with madness. He becomes like a beast in the field. But then he humbles himself before God, and his humanity returns to him. He's restored as king. This is in contrast with his son, Belshazzar, who doesn't humble himself before God, and he's assassinated that very night. Now, these two stories draw this imagery from Genesis chapters 1 and 2 and Psalm 8, where humans are depicted as the royal image of God. He's given them authority to rule over the beasts of the field and the birds of the air on behalf of God, who is the world's true king. But when human kingdoms forget that, when they rebel and make themselves and their power into a God, they become less than human, like violent beasts who will face God's justice. Which brings us to chapter 6, the pair of chapter 3. And this time it's Daniel who's being persecuted because he refuses to pray and worship the king as a god. And so like the friends, he's sentenced to death and he's thrown into a lion's den. But God delivers him from the beasts and like the friends, the king exalts Daniel and praises his god. Which brings us to chapter 7. It's the pair of chapter 2 and the center of the book where all its themes come together. It's another dream, but it's Daniel's this time. And ironically, he can't understand the dream until an 
angelic messenger explains it to him. He sees a series of four beasts, one like a lion, then like a bear, then one like a winged leopard, each of these symbolizing an arrogant kingdom. And last of all is a super beast, identified as a really evil empire, and it has lots of horns, a common symbol for kings in the Old Testament. And there's one specific horn who is an image of an arrogant king who exalts himself above God and persecutes God's people. Now they are symbolized by a figure called the Son of Man, who's an image for both God's covenant people, but also for their king from the line of David. But then all of a sudden, God, who's called the Ancient of Days, comes and he sets up his throne. He destroys the super beast and he exalts the Son of Man on the clouds where he comes up to sit at God's right hand and share in God's rule over the nations. We can look back now and see how all of these stories in the first half fit together. The three stories of faithfulness despite persecution, these are meant to offer hope to God's suffering people among the nations. But they suffer because human kingdoms have rebelled against God and have become beasts. And so these visions encourage patience, that God's people are to wait for him to bring his kingdom and rule over our world and vindicate his suffering people. But it raises the question about when God is going to do that, and that's what these final three visions set out to explore. In chapter 8, Daniel has another vision about the final two beasts of chapter 7, but this time they're symbolized by a ram, who we're told is the image of the empire of the Medes and Persians, and then by a goat, who's an image of ancient Greece. And out of the goat come a whole bunch of horns, one of which symbolizes the evil king from chapter 7. And we're told more about him, that he will attack Jerusalem and exalt himself above God and defile the temple with idols. However, in the end, he will be destroyed by God who will exalt his people and his kingdom. Now by chapter 9, Daniel is very puzzled, especially as to when all of this is going to take place. And so he consults the scroll of the prophet Jeremiah, where God said that Israel's exile would only last 70 years. So for Daniel, the 70 years is almost up. And so he asks God to fulfill his promise soon. But an angel comes and informs him that Israel's sin and rebellion has continued. And so their time of exile and oppression will continue on seven times longer than Jeremiah envisioned. Daniel is deeply disturbed by this and he has one final vision. We're shown the same sequence of kingdoms. It's Persia, then Greece, and Alexander the Great, followed by lesser kings, all leading up to this final king of the north, who will invade Jerusalem, set up idols in the temple, and exalt himself above God. But then, all of a sudden, this king comes to ruin. Now, there's been endless debate about what all of these visions refer to. Many see a clear connection to the exploits of the Syrian king Antiochus in the 160s BC. He killed many faithful Jews in Jerusalem and set up idols in the temple. Others think it points forward to the Roman Empire's role in the execution of Jesus and the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in AD 70. And still others think it will be fulfilled in future events that have yet to happen when Jesus will return. Now the problem is that the symbols and the numbers, they don't quite match any of these views perfectly. But it opens up the possibility that in a sense, they are all right. The book of Daniel has been designed to offer hope to all future generations of God's people. It did so in the days of Antiochus' empire, and it has ever since. This is why Jesus could use imagery from Daniel to describe and confront the oppressive leaders he confronted in Jerusalem. This is why John the visionary who wrote the Revelation could adapt Daniel's visions and apply them to Rome of his day and also all future oppressive empires. And so the point of Daniel is that all generations of readers can find here a pattern and a promise. It's a pattern that human beings and their kingdoms become violent beasts when they glorify their own power, when they redefine right and wrong, and don't acknowledge God as their true king. But Daniel also holds out a promise that one day God will confront the beast. He will rescue his world and his people by bringing his kingdom over all nations. And so for every generation, this book speaks a message of hope that should motivate faithfulness. And that's what the book of Daniel is all about.
sacrifice that was needed that would buy eternal life for you and me had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary had it not bitter cup Although he prayed Father let this pass from me And I'm so glad he never called heaven's angels From these hands all the nails that torment me Jesus 